The thing is that they forgot what life was like as a slave, and so they had no appreciation for their current situation, and they were forgetting about their current destination. And they wanted to go back where they came from. They wanted to go back and be slaves. They thought, man, this is too hard for me. And some people today, that's the problem they got. It got tough for them. It got too difficult for them. God had called them to service, and it was going to, it was going to, listen, it was going to, uh, there was going to be a price that would have to be paid, and you would have to make your sacrifices with your life. It was going to exact a heavy toll. Can I tell you that anybody who stood here has paid prices, and it's not over with. Amen? But the Bible tells us that we are supposed to be like good soldiers. And sometimes we have to endure the hardship. But let us not forget where we were came, where we came from. We are so familiar since we said, well, I'll just say this. I'm so familiar because it's been, it's been, uh, uh, I've been a Christian for just a long time. Amen? I can say that today. Some of you have been in church for a long time. I don't know about being a Christian. What do they say about being a Christian in a church? Wait, being in a church doesn't necessarily make you a Christian any more than being in a garage makes you a car. Okay. I get that. Man, do I get that. And it's not, it's not, it's not funny, ha-ha, so you might want to take that to heart. Because here's, here's some of our defense. Well, you know, I've been going to church since I was a, we, you know, nine to a nap. And so, big deal. Just to be clear, it is a big deal. But did it do, did it change you? Has your life been enhanced? Have, have you been set free from the bondage and slavery of sin? Or are you worse off? For them that know to do good and do it not? Sin. Sin. How can we stay in our sin knowing what we're doing to Jesus? Some of you may, may have heard the song. I haven't sang it in a while. I will be singing it again, I'm sure. But I wonder if he still feels the pain every time I fail. Yes. And if I'm causing him pain, then I know I've got to change. Church, listen to me. Some of you need to heed my words this morning. And these are not my words. These are from God, the, the Father Almighty. He's saying, listen, you need to change. You see, without God in my life, boy, would my life be different. But if I didn't have the Lord in my life, I mean, God has touched every area of my life and, and he's redeemed it to himself. And there are times in my life when there is a, there's a debate, there's a struggle going on. And, and wait, I'm, I'm pulled this way. And I'm, I, I have a family, wait, and I have me, and I have, I have interests, and I have a job. And I, all these things, I'm pulled this way and that way. And there's a constant debate going on, which do I do first? Which do I not do at all? Which do I postpone? I think it, there was a time in my life when I thought it was easier. I'm just punching a time clock. I mean, it, it, I always was at least five minutes early because if I was on time, I was late. Yeah. I punched a time clock. I came and I, I, I earned my day's wages. Punched a time clock and I went home. That was so easy. I, let me tell you, there are some folks right now that are dealing, they're really, some of you might be like this. You've been set free, but you're like the, the man who's been in prison his whole life when he comes out into the real world, and now suddenly he doesn't have somebody tell him when to get up, when to get clothed, when to eat, when to, when to shower. He doesn't have somebody telling him what to do and when to do it because he's now a free man, and he can't exist out here. A couple weeks ago, I had a conversation with a young man who's been out of jail for just a few months. And he's having a difficult time. 42 years old, and he went into jail when he was 17. He's got a job, not doing too bad. He says, when I'm at work, it's great. He says, it's after I punch out. He says, what should what we say? If I could just stay on the job, morning, noon, and night, go home and, and get up and come back to work. If I could just stay on the job. He said, he said, Pastor Fields, I'm really having a tough time with this freedom thing. 
He never knew what freedom was about. He messed up at a young age, was, was incarcerated, and how many, I don't know, I don't care if you've been in jail or not, but you don't, you may, you may have an idea what I'm talking about. Now, think about this, there are people who, they get so distraught over it, they go, they go break some law just so they go back to the, go back to lockup. That's no kind of life, is it? I mean, without God, my life would be so different. It's because we are only free from the bondage of sin. Because God sent down his only begotten son and he took the punishment for us on a tree of Calvary. And some of you are shaming the cross of Christ because it's still all about you. You still want to hear that gospel. Well, and get this, I understand the sentiment behind this. If it had only, if it was just for you, he still would have died. The problem with that is, is that it's not what the gospel says in its entirety. The Bible says that he died for all of creation. He died to redeem man and all of creation. And one day, he's coming to take what's his. And those that are not his will be cast out. Wait a second. They already are out. They're not in his presence any longer. And maybe you're one of those people and you're hearing me this morning and say, man, that's rough. That's, that's harsh right there, brother. Man, Pastor Tony, that is, that, that's, you really upset me right now. Let me tell you what to do. Turn to Jesus right now and say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me. So we are called to remember what our life was like before God and what it would be like. Wait, some of you already know what it's like without him. Hmm. So we need to know who he is. We need to remember that we were held as bondage, as slaves to sin. And we need to remember what God has done for us. So I've given you a few verses in your bulletin as well. Because along the same lines of remembering our bondage to sin, we are to remember what God has done for us. Let me give you a few examples. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2. And you shall remember the the, the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness. That he might humble you. Why, why did God lead Israel in the, in the wilderness? Some want to make, listen, you say, yeah, you know, it took them 40 years to, to travel an 11-day journey. How long is it taking you to finally get where you're supposed to be? Some of you are over, been, been in the church over 40 years, and you're still not there. Just to be clear. It may not be only on your account. Some of this might be God leading you or letting you. He is not going to force you. Did you hear what I'm telling you? First off, the Holy Spirit is a gentleman, by the way. Come or don't come, it's up to you. Holy Spirit comes, he convicts you. It's your choice. It's your choice to either respond properly to that conviction or to turn away. Now I want to caution you because we are discouraged in the Bible about grieving the Holy Spirit. Yes. So he led them in the desert and the Bible says that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Well, you know, sister, you know, if, if the pews weren't orange, if the carpet wasn't brown, if the music wasn't this, if the preaching wasn't that, if it was the way I liked it, come on, stop with the Goldilocks thing, with the three bears or whatever. Three bears. You're looking for it did just right. Now, I don't know, did anybody remember that story about the three bears? <laughs> too hard, too soft. Just right. How was she awakened in the morning? They were awakened by the bears. How did that how is that going to turn out in your life? When you wake up and realize you've just been trying to find a place that's just right. See, for me, and it's still, I will say it in one of my scriptures. Walking through the valley of the shadow of death. He's with me. 
And as long as I know he's there, 